we first met Ben Johnston at the Other Minds Festival here in San Francisco in 2009. And at that time, we, uh, he actually shared with us his 10th quartet, which we immediately became extremely fascinated by. And uh, we managed to learn it and premiere it in 2012 down in L.A. Yeah, John Schneider, I, he invited us down for his uh, microtonal festival. Um, and it was a blast because Ben Johnston was able to come out and we worked with him and it, it was just a lot of fun and it was great to dive into that music. Ben Johnston's system of intonation is just, it's crazy. It, I mean, it's based on very natural types of resonances, except that the way he sets it up, all of a sudden in a one octave instead of the 12 notes that you would normally find on the piano, you would find, you know, a couple hundred different notes. And so, which becomes uh, a very interesting landmine <laughs> to wade through. At the same time, I think it's, it has completely changed the way that we approach traditional pieces as well. It's given us a framework to talk about intonation and a specificity that we've never had before. Johnston's music at Library of Congress was a just unbeatable experience for all sorts of reasons. For me, wonderful sense of mission of bringing Ben Johnston's music to a new public and to a new level of recognition because there's a sense of arrival when your work is presented at Library of Congress. The public reacted in an incredibly gratifying way. Um, you know, when we finished the first movement, there were these whoops of, you know, just wasn't that fun from the audience. And there was this sense of discovery of how did I not know about this, of how, how incredible this music is, um, that regardless if they're, if they're educated musicians or if they're lay people who have no idea what we're doing, um, there's a sort of a visceral response to this music, an excitement uh, uh, that is almost uncontainable. Right. And I think we feel that as a quartet, it's like, ah! but then like the audience feels it um, coming from us and through the music that is just, it's electrifying. He's basically using a nine-note scale, um, which based on the part of my technicality, eight through sixteen harmonics, and he would change kind of chord to chord to chord as we went along. In the fourth quartet, he's using kind of pivot notes, and basically you have like one part of the piece in a certain tonality, and another one slightly removed, so it creates two different colors and so almost like you're seeing double vision a little bit and it just kind of goes back and forth a little bit and and so it it produces a really cool effect um and and again it's like the, the fourth is based on the amazing grace hymn and so that is the theme that is used throughout the entire piece um and the variations that he uses then uh with that is, is pretty amazing uh, and and by the time you've gone through the entire piece, it's like you've been taken on like, uh, this wild journey and have then arrived at something special by the end. So I'm really excited we're doing this as part of our soundings project. Um, we'll, we'll play both um, the third and the fourth quartet. We'll actually do it twice and we have an artist who um, has a series of photography based on um, her mom's transition in Alzheimer's and it's a series of flowers and what those flowers represent. 
So I'm really excited to see that happen in February. <laughs> Well, he's changed my life, period. As a violinist, you think about playing in tune and hearing it in tune, and that has not changed. But there's, there are specific language for how to approach intonation. So I go, oh, that didn't work. Oh, that's the reason why. It's supposed to be a 9 eight here, or that's a G minus, I'm like G neutral. And, and it's very easy to target exactly what you're doing, whether you're playing classical music or if you're just improvising. And it's wonderful to hear the specificity of how you're playing in tune. It's really wonderful. Ben Johnson's music, for me, was the first time that I felt I could bring my old background in mathematics to play in music. I sat down with pen and paper and, and started to, to analyze exactly what he was talking about. And by doing so, all of a sudden, I began to really understand how all of intonation uh, ties together, and it was just a completely liberating moment. Ben Johnson, I might say, saved me as a cellist. Uh, I was actually going through a really difficult time as a musician when we played his piece, and suddenly I discovered something that I connected with me and I found him so valuable that I had a special and unique ability to dig into. His system brought such clarity to a lot of issues in music that I found so frustrating through my whole life. Like these questions that I had my whole life, like, why can't I play in tune? And like, why is this so difficult? And I don't understand, like, I don't understand how to play in tune. And all of a sudden, everything was so clear. It was like, oh, you know, it's like, you have that moment and suddenly the world is a different place and you say, how could I never have seen this before? Yeah.